All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the canvas and drop some modules which I'm going to be using, some common modules. Import SAR is what's going to allow me to import those two radar sat images. The next thing I'll do is I'll find some key algorithms. So what I do is I can click on the module librarian and I can go find some key algorithms that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to use auto shift. So I can just start typing roughly what the algorithm name is. I can drop that in just by clicking on the module librarian icon. So I can click here and drop it in or I can add it to canvas either way. The other modules I'm going to need are clip. So I'll go looking for that. Now I'm going to need a copy of that. So I'll just hit duplicate and drop a copy there. I'm going to then need a common module called type split. I'm going to need two of those. And uh, there's, a, there's an inter a couple of intermediate steps here. So uh, I'd like to keep a copy of the shifted image for visualization reasons. So when I shift one of my images here, I'd like to export that out. The other thing I want to do is I want to import my vector that's going to clip all of these layers. Another key algorithm that I need to bring in is uh, CCD in 10, which is the intensity change, coherent change detection algorithm. So I'm going to add that here. I'm also going to need my X extract polygons from raster. So I'm going to type X polras, which is the name of that algorithm. I'm going to drop it in there. I will also need an export to get all of my results exported out. Okay, so that's roughly what uh, what the layout should be. So it's nice to kind of lay things out like this before you start connecting everything. Now there's one more one more thing I need here, which is a common module called a split, and uh, I'll need to isolate a specific layer from CCD and ten, which I'll explain in a minute. So the first thing we need to do is we need to populate all of these modules with the key information that we need. You can you notice that they're all red right now. So to make these green, I have to double click on them and specify the specific, double click on them and specify the parameters. So I'm going to go to my location where I have the input data. So the, the top part I actually want to maintain as the June 20th image. So I can select the specific uh, calibration that I want. I'm just going to work with uh, digital numbers for now. The uh, second image on the bottom is going to be the May 27th image. So I'll accept that. Now the auto shift, what I want to do is I actually want to shift the June 20th image to match up with the May 27th image. Now a nice trick here is to actually add comments. So I can search up the comment module and I can make uh, copies of that. So here I'd like to remember that this is the June 20th, 2010 image. Just resize that so I can see it. So I can put this uh, copy down here and just modify what's in it. This is the May 27th, 2010 image. All right. So that's uh, quite easy, so I've got that. So what I want to do is I want to uh, select the input image that I want to shift is the June 20th, so I'll connect that right away. And the reference image, so if I hover over this port here, you can see that it wants the reference complex image. So that's what I'll do. The next thing here is to pick my clip layer. So if I go under a specific folder here, I made myself a, a polygon that outlines a, a specific portion of the airport that I want to work with. So I can connect that vector port, very important here, the vector port to the vector port of the clip module. And then I can either click on the pipe or click on the vector port again and connect it to the, to the other clip. I need to run this twice, if you remember, for the two data sets. All right. And um, here what I need to do is I need to pass the raster data. So I'm going to click 
on the output port for the auto shift and feed that into the clip. And in this case, I don't need to use it. Obviously, I need, I need the other layer so I can click on the May 27th image that's going to be imported and put that here for clipping. So I'll click on the May 27th image and connect it to the uh, clip layer. Next thing I'll do is I'll just split out the raster and the vector. At this point, there's both raster and vector data coming through here because we're passing through our clip layer. So here what we need to do is we need to, to double click and make sure that raster is selected. Same thing here. Now you notice this one is still red and the reason for that is we need to set an important parameter which is the uh, clip definition type. So I'll make that clip layer so it knows to use the clip layer that's being uh, brought in. And you'll notice that changes the, uh, the uh, module to green. Here I wanted to keep a reference layer so I'm just going to um, specify a reference layer here. So I'll just, it's a good practice to select overwrite if you uh, want to uh, run the model several times. So I'll just export out a copy of that, uh, that image. Uh, the next thing is to run uh, CCD in 10. So what I'll do is I'll actually connect the May 27th image to the, uh, the top port, which is the input port. And then I'll use the June 20th as the reference. This is just, uh, it can be done either way. It just controls the way that the results are automatically loaded once you uh, perform the analysis, the colors that will be represented. Th th that can be modified, but uh, this way it's all done automatically. So a bit of a trick here. So what I want to do, there's going to be four layers that are going to be calculated in the CCD in 10 module. So what I want to do is I want to isolate the fourth channel. I know this because I ran this before. But essentially, if I click on the second channel and I connect it to this uh, XPOL RAS, it, uh, it, it gives me a third channel that I can connect. So what I'll do is I'll duplicate that and I'll duplicate it again. So I'll click, this is going to be my channel three. And what I, what I want is channel four. So I actually only want to keep this one and I want to delete these other ones, which I temporarily made, made copies. So that will give me my final result, which is going to be written to disk through the export module. So let me just uh, make a new copy here. And I'll just click overwrite in case I want to run that model again. Now you'll notice Expo RAS is still red. Now what's going to happen is when CCD intensity is performed, it uh, produces four channels. The fourth channel is the, the percentile rank of all of the changes. So what I want to do is I want to keep everything that's in the 95th percentile and above. So this is really only the most, most uh, highly changing areas in, in the data set. I can also specify the size of the minimum size of the area that I want to keep or maximum. We're just going to pick 25 now. This is the pixel pixels are about two meters in this data set. So this will only keep uh, larger, larger areas. So everything's green. I like to keep a copy of the data in my export, so it's all on one file. So rather than just, if I click on this one, it's just going to be one channel. But what I want to, what I'd like to do is keep all four channels. So I'll click on this pipe because I know that this pipe's going to have all four channels, and I'll connect it through here. So I'll just double check my model once again. If it looks good, I'm just going to go ahead and run it. Now you'll notice once the uh, actual modules are starting to run, they show a progress bar on the, on the modules themselves. They'll turn blue, and once they're done, they'll turn gray. You can see that that one is done. This one is starting now, so it starts off white, shows a progress bar, then it turns gray once it's complete. You can also see that these pipes actually fill with the data, indicating where they are in the processing workflow. So if I right-click on, if I select this pipe here, and I, I can actually look at the viewing view the pipe contents. So this is telling me that the uh, actual scattering data from the images is located in this pipe right now. So auto shift is completed. The file has been exported to disk. The two images have been clipped and the rasters have been 
spread out, the CCD intensity was uh, performed. And uh, here we have the four channels coming in. Now another, another nice thing is we can actually see um, how much data is in, in the pipe. So you notice that the thickness of the pipe is a little bit bigger than this one. So in this one, if I right click on it, you can see that there's four channels of data. And in this pipe is our uh, percentile ranked change metric uh, channel, which is channel four. So the pipe is a little bit skinnier. And then uh, this is our actual XPOL RAS uh, result. So let's just uh, quickly go back to our focus window and load up that uh, layer, which we've just created. So we have our four channels of data. The uh, test image, which is the June 20th, the reference image, which is May 27th, the actual change metric, and then the ranked change metric. And this is the channel that we use to automatically extract the objects. Now we can load that up. And you can see that uh, we have our objects automatically uh, created. So hopefully that gives you a sense of how easy it is to build models and automate uh, many tasks within uh, Geomatica, within the modeler environment. It's quite a nice uh, environment to visually see a workflow and experiment with, uh, with different things. So hopefully you enjoyed that. If you'd like to uh, leave a comment, uh, please go ahead down below. And if you have any questions, be sure to get in touch. Thanks for watching.